Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by leaving a comment, by subscribing if you have not done so already, or by telling me what you plan on doing with your weekend. Um, and quick side note, I slept for about four hours, so if I ever seem a little down or just not completely there at some points, that's my excuse because I didn't get any sleep, so the engine's not at full steam. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. When I say there's a lot to cover, uh, Tesla doing what they did a couple of days ago has really lit a fire across the entire planet. That sounds more dystopian than it should have, but you kind of get what I'm saying. So, um, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high. Uh, basically, b people believe that it's fueled by the news from Tesla, that they purchased $1.5 billion, and therefore the idea was that other industry players also planned on getting into the market, and therefore that's kind of the reason for the rush. I think we hit 48400 500 US dollars. Then a couple of minutes later, it says Bitcoin sets a new all-time high at 49000 US dollars. Um, basically being a smidge, an actual smidge away from $1 trillion, which is a little annoying when you're looking at the prices, because me and, so, in one of my chat groups, crypto chat groups, hello out there to those who are in that group, uh, we were basically discussing, like, hey, Bitcoin's at 48,000 so-and-so, it's clearly going to 49, Bitcoin's at 49, hey, it's clearly going to 50,000, and then the price kind of like dips, we were also looking at Cardano, uh, because Cardano was, I think, like $8 million away from being the number three coin, and then Bitcoin hit 49,000, began to slope down a little bit, and this is kind of where we are, and we're like 47,000 something or other in price right now, this one says Bitcoin market cap briefly tops 900 billion US dollars. I'm not sure if it's fear, I'm not sure if it's excitement, I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but every we keep inching closer and closer to a $50,000 Bitcoin and therefore a $1 trillion market cap Bitcoin, but we keep like missing it every single time, we're like scratching the ceiling, but the ceiling keeps moving away, that's a terrible analogy, is that the right word? I'm not really sure. The entire point is, um, we're this close. Everyone knows, or rather it is commonplace thought, uh, that once we hit 50,000, there's no turning back. Like, that is the rocket fuel propulsion system that's going to uh, keep us surging a lot higher. There are all these price predictions coming out. You would not believe, you could not possibly believe how many websites have <clears throat> $50,000 Bitcoin, $52,000 Bitcoin, $55,000 Bitcoin, $65,000 Bitcoin a week after we hit $50,000, $89,000 Bitcoin by June, $125,000. I mean, it is all over the place and it's because we are on the very cusp of hitting $50,000 and therefore I guess everybody wants to throw their hat into the ring. I feel like that's a saying, throw their cup into the ring. The point is, um, yes, we are very close to hitting all these milestones and there's so many things that are allegedly uh, the cause for this rise in the market. <clears throat> the entire cryptocurrency market, the entirety of it, it says nears 1.5, I think we actually passed that. It says nears 1.5 trillion dollars as Bitcoin surpasses the world's biggest banks. We were just having the conversation no more than like three or four weeks ago. Hey, oh my gosh, the entire cryptocurrency market is almost at a trillion. That's going to be crazy when we pass a trillion. And now we're already having discussions that we're at 1.5 trillion, getting very close to 2 trillion <clears throat> US dollars as an entire uh, market cap. Here, so if you scroll down, it actually has like the, the list that someone published. It says it was another red, red letter day. For crypto, as the bull run pushed the global market cap to just under 1.5 trillion, the surge came thanks to Bitcoin's climb to 48,000, breaking yet another record, the second in a week. The rest of the market cap gains put Bitcoin's market cap close to $900 billion. For perspective, this makes it larger than JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Citigroup combined. And here's the actual screenshot for it. I just posted this on my Twitter because I, I think people need to see these things. You know, we, we get into these situations where you can hear it as many times as you want to hear it, but you need to actually know for certain and look at the numbers and know that we have far out surpassed and are crushing 
uh, and I don't want to say that they've been against us, but a number of institutions and banks and companies who have been completely not on our side for a very long time until they realized that there was tons of money to make in our market. And now here they are talking and praising Bitcoin and all these other things. So um, once again, there's no real reason why we could not or should not have already passed one trillion dollars or, you know, $50,000 Bitcoin. I think the entire thing right now, I simply believe it just has to do with people behind the scenes who are making sure that the price doesn't rise so that they can accumulate more. You would want to logically accumulate more at 47000 48000 49000 as opposed to 65000 125000 because you see the long-term prospectus for where this is all going to go. And when I say long-term, I mean actually long term this isn't going to be a 5 to 10 year thing bitcoin right now is looking like it is going to be a world reserve currency or the world reserve currency previously how we had uh gold this is what i mean and it it looks all but evident at this point there's no real like a eh, kind of thing it's like oh no this is definitely this is where this is all going Bitcoin price forecast, Bitcoin battles for new records high as bulls eye $52,500. Sure, why not? As long as we I have, I have a friend who, uh, one of the same guys in the um, the chat who always puts like a yawn emoji and it always makes me want to yawn. A yawn emoji whenever I show him like the price for the cryptocurrency market because he's like, I won't be really enthused until uh, Bitcoin is above 100000 Like that's his, he's like, that's when I'll get excited. And I'm like, the 48000 doesn't tickle your fancy um also in the news um it says ripple price prediction xrp poised for a massive move to 75 cents i'm not sure why i looked around i looked around for the last like 12 13 hours worth of news not joking there was no xrp news but xrp is up by like 12 13 percent like an actual pew, like an actual surge upward usually historically if uh, we see a price rise like that in the market and we have no news, it is usually because something behind the scenes is happening, logically. But it's more like a, um, before we'd see a coin pump by 14%, 8%, 9%, 12% over the course of a week, and everyone's like, why is that coin constantly going up? And then we found out a week later that they were integrating into something and we could assume, or assumptioned, not a thing, uh, that people behind the scenes who knew were buying and therefore that's why the price was rising quite rapidly so i guess speculation if you will but xrp is definitely pumping it could also be because if you look at the actual numbers xrp isn't that far off from cardano and tether and if we got like another good 25 percent pump xrp would be the number three coin again i don't know remember before we also had news it was the nasdaq i think it was the nasdaq i think it was the nasdaq doesn't matter doesn't matter i'm pretty sure it was the nasdaq in 2019, where they were saying, it's funny how I haven't had any sleep, but I still have all this energy. Oh, gosh, I'm so tired. Um, Where they announced that they were going to be adding cryptocurrencies to their platform, but they said um, they saw no reason why they wouldn't add some of the top coins. So I guess maybe everyone's trying to make sure that they are a top coin so they can get added to these mega platforms. Not really sure. That was just hyper speculation. But XRP's pumping, and I, there was no news for it. So, and to finish all of that off, it says U.S. dollar continues bearish continuation as Bitcoin hits record highs. The U.S. dollar dipped. It keeps going down. There was like a little pump sometime last week, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, what's happening to Bitcoin? We know that the US dollar is relatively done for. It's not tinfoil hat. It's not conspiracy theorists. It is just numbers. We've had the banks come forward and say, hey, it looks like the US dollar is going to drop by 20% in 2021. Oh my gosh, that's the year that we're in, and it looks like the US dollar is actually falling. All of the companies, all of the companies, all of the companies, all of the companies who told us that they were getting into Bitcoin said they were doing so because of the constant devaluation of the U.S. dollar. So we can only assume that this will be a trend that is going to continue through the rest of this year, especially as we keep getting news, sprinkles of news of the next stimulus check, which is going to be the $1.9 trillion bada bing bada boom check. And then allegedly <clears throat> another continuation of around round z of check throughout the rest of the year. So, yeah, uh, U.S. dollar keeps going down. More companies and institutions and banks uh, keep buying 
Bitcoin. I saw somebody in the comment section. I'm sorry if I, 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 I a lot of people ask the same question and I used to answer them and I'm like, that's going to take like years off of my life, like literally just, just sitting there. So it's better if I say it. People were asking um, what countries were into Bitcoin. They said they couldn't find any articles. Type in um, Venezuela army Bitcoin. Type in Russia head economist. It, it, it was one of the, the people... Like one of the head economists in Russia who works inside the Kremlin, who leaked, uh, said, I think this was 2018 or 2019. He was like, yeah, we're buying Bitcoin. And then everyone was like, what? He's like, huh? Who, who said what? You just said Bitcoin. I didn't. B, b, who? So it, it was kind of one of those situations where <clears throat> kind of like the other Ripple thing where they keep announcing things and then they go, we, we never said that. Wink. Um, What other country was there? <laughs> Uh, so not um, type in Korea, but not the one at the bottom, the north one uh, with Bitcoin. You'll definitely find information there. Uh, type in, oh gosh, um, type in IMF. So International Monetary Fund, Bitcoin bonds. Uh, and there were three other countries. I think I said Venezuela. I don't remember. I, if, if not, Venezuela is also one of them as well. Um, there's a couple of other ones. So it's, it's not speculation so much as it is like, we know that they are, one can only assume that if the mega banks are getting into it and the richest people on the planet and the, and the biggest companies are doing that behind the scenes, governments are also doing it as well. There was also the news about Denmark and their pension funds. They own Bitcoin indirectly through Grayscale, what have you, um, there was also news floating around yesterday. I believe it was Kenya. I believe it was Kenya. I don't really know because there were multiple articles floating around. I believe it was Kenya that they were adopting Bitcoin. And I posted a, a still image, screenshot, still image, uh, on Twitter about it. Because I saw it on about five, six different other websites, basically all saying that it was a thing that their government was basically like, okay, we're going to start adopting Bitcoin. But I saw it on even like... <clears throat> legitimate websites so i don't know I, I i doubt if the news is real people were kind of um hesitant to be like it is real and then my friend told me he was like the initial website that it was on was meant to be like it like an onion like website like a joking kind of website and therefore the article was like our money's so bad we have no choice kind of thing anyway um the point is um adoption continues at a rapid pace and one of the ideas why or as to why the market um, popped up the last two or three days was not only because of Tesla, but was also because of this. It says a $2 trillion investment bank known as BNY Mellon will offer Bitcoin custody to its clients after stating that digital assets are seeing widespread adoption. So the idea was that this is largest, oldest, richest, somethingest bank within America, and therefore they announced we are going to start offering Bitcoin services, and this also caused the price to spike as well. BNY Mellon works with Bact, the crypto futures platform owned by the New York Stock Exchange, to secure crypto assets. On Thursday, the $2 trillion investment giant announced that it would hold, transfer, and issue Bitcoin and other digital assets for its asset management clients. It also plans to launch a platform that will handle digital assets in the same way as traditional assets like treasuries and stocks. So we keep, how do I, I need to put this into like proper words so that we can kind of move on with life. Um, the other day when Tesla announced that they were going to be getting into the Bitcoin space, there were, and, and I mentioned this before, there were tons of analysts on CNBC, Fox News, ABC, one, two, three, all over the place. They were like, they didn't understand why would they be doing that? This doesn't make it like they were actually crumbling. You could see them breaking apart at the seams and taking off part of their face because they were just not completely there anymore. I don't know if they don't understand, if they simply don't want to understand, but the banks definitely understand. When we talk about Citigroup being into it, when we talk about JP Morgan Chase definitely being into Bitcoin, when we talk about BNY Mellon being into it, when all the hedge funds, and all, they, they see where the US dollar is going. The U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency. When the world reserve currency breaks down, every other currency breaks down even further and simply becomes dust. It is abundantly clear at this point that Bitcoin is here to stay. 
Bitcoin is going to hit these spectacular phantasmagorical numbers over this year or next year or the next 10 years or the next 20 years. Bitcoin is going to have an enormous amount of longevity because it's being adopted by everyone. I didn't even think I have all. No, I, I couldn't. It was impossible. You can't see how many tabs I have left up here. You would not believe the amount of news that's there. I'm going <laughs> to if I find the energy, <laughs> I'll make another video. If not, uh, then definitely tomorrow. The amount of companies and institutions who are kind of like poking their head out of the ground and they're like, well, Tesla did it, so we should start doing it as well. There were other, there were other rampant news. This company discussed a $1 million allocation. This company discussed doing so-and-so. Like, they're here. They're coming. Even more of them. Like, you don't understand. Like, this is it. Everyone is rushing to get into the cryptocurrency space because it is no longer speculative. These Visa and MasterCard explicitly told us, yes, we're getting into Bitcoin. We're adding it as a payment option. We are integrating this with banks so that when you use this, you can also use Bitcoin. They're doing this because they know that the U.S. dollar is done. There's no other polite way to kind of say that. The digital U.S. dollar will at some point be a thing and some people will use it. But you'll be able to see the actual devaluation next to Bitcoin's price. People are not going to choose to put their money into a falling, fleeting currency when we keep getting indications that Bitcoin is going to 600,000, 700,000, 1.5 million. Why would you buy into the US dollar? And as more people continue to buy Bitcoin, the higher the price goes. The higher the price goes, the more stable it becomes. The more stable it becomes, the more people use it as a currency. There was also Lightning Network news. It's somewhere, somewhere on my screen on the computer somewhere, uh, basically discussing that I think two more crypto exchanges were like, yeah, we're also going to be offering Lightning as well. Lightning is going to be a thing. It's going to be super robust. For those of you who do not know what Lightning is, it is another layer chain that is wrapped around Bitcoin that basically allows for transactions to happen within one second. Not a fake one second, like an actual one second. And the cost of the transaction is one Satoshi, which is like one one thousandth of one cent right now as opposed to the current thing. So in five years, we're going to have a completely different Bitcoin. We also have uh, Mimblewimble, we also have Taproot, and we have Schnorr, all private transactions on Bitcoin. These things are coming. Bitcoin is going to reshape the entirety of the planet, and basically only me and you know about it, and the banks. So many other people are just not in the cryptocurrency space right now, and I don't know what to tell them. Uh, I do tip my hat to you, um, to my friends uh, who listen to me. I think it's Four, five, five people, five, four, five, doesn't matter who listened to me years ago, even like a year and a half ago when I was screaming, I was like, Bitcoin's under 10,000. Can, can you please buy right now? Oh, fine. I'll go buy some. And now they're happy because they're super rich because they made tons of money from basically buying a number on the screen. Like, do you, so the point is, um, BNY Malone, Milan, Malone, uh, Melon doesn't matter. Uh, is adopting Bitcoin. This is one of the major reasons as to why people believe we were a smidge away from $50,000. It is believed that if the oldest $2 trillion bank within the United States is going to start adopting Bitcoin in some sort of way, that other banks will simply have to follow suit and start holding it on their so-and-so and have to hold it on this and blah, 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 blah. Becomes a part of their reserves and that's kind of all she wrote. Um, right. Uh, what is this one? America's oldest custody bank, uh, BNY, to offer Bitcoin custody. America's oldest bank goes Bitcoin. A $50,000 Bitcoin possible as MasterCard, BNY, Mellon announces crypto integration. We, we, were, go we, were, we were going to hit $50,000, no MasterCard or no BNY. But this now helps us. It's hot. It's quite sunny. This now propels us to the possibility of a hundred and twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin in a shorter amount of time, uh, because we can only assume that they're doing this because their clients have contacted them. This bank isn't like, well, I like the sound of Bitcoin. It kind of doesn't roll off the tongue, but you know, let's still integrate it. No, they've had more than enough clients behind the scenes who are like, I need a place to be able to custody this. I like this bank. I use this bank. You are trusted. Let's do this. And after the hundredth client, they was like, cool, let's do it. That's what happens. Money moves everything around us. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. USA's BNY Malone to introduce Bitcoin custody plans. Ha. Huh. Hold on. Wait. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I was trying to close part of the window. It didn't work. It didn't work at all. 
Anyway, um, mm, 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 mm. oh, right. On top of that as well, which is also believed to, you know, have thrown a couple thousands at Bitcoin's price. It says Uber may start accepting Bitcoin for rides. This was said by the CEO. Uber CEO Dara Korov Shahi said that the ride sharing giant may start allowing to its users to pay for journeys using Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. He told CNBC today that the company is looking into whether it would be beneficial to <laughs> stop it, whether it would be beneficial to the company to make this happen. He said, just like we accept all kinds of local currency, we are going to look at cryptocurrency and or Bitcoin in terms of currency to transact. That's good for business. That's good for our riders and our eaters. So backing it up a little bit, for those of you who may not have been here in 2018 and 2019 when Facebook decided to announce that they were going to be launching their own digital coin, not a cryptocurrency. It is not open source. It is not for everyone to use. It is not going to be decentralized in the way that Bitcoin is decentralized. Um, Uber and Lyft were partners of the Libra Foundation. And at some point, regulators were like, <laughs> and I believe it was Uber and Lyft who left uh, the Libra Foundation. The idea was that they were joining Libra, speculation, uh, to actually be able to accept Libra as a payment option because it was believed back then that if Facebook did it really quick, they would have become the largest bank on the planet and with the most users, you know, billions of people, yada, yada. And therefore, it would have kind of spread like crypto fire. That's not a thing. Um, so the idea that they're looking into, wink, wink, um, the idea of um, accepting Bitcoin and or accepting cryptocurrencies is just stop it. You were, you were part of the Libra Foundation. What is it called now? Floopy? No, what is it? Libra Cav Car Caribbean? It has a brand new name. Mythic. Boat. I don't know. It has a new weird name. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, that's also the news as well that apparently Uber may start accepting uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos for rides. Um, gonna go on on a limb and say that they probably have had many discussions about this. Uh, and are probably going to do so uh, because nobody wants to be left out. If you know that you can start accepting Bitcoin as a payment option and you can start accumulating Bitcoin now and Bitcoin goes to $400,000, well, you've made your company a huge chunk of change. Um, I think the other news was that Uber was like, at the current moment, we are not considering adding Bitcoin to our uh, spreadsheets the same exact way that Tesla is. Cool. Congratulations. Uh, two other companies came out as well, basically saying that the exact they, they were like, yeah, we're not going to be adding it like Tesla. And I'm like, have fun. Please understand that when Bitcoin goes up to $200,000, you are going to be one of the first companies to jump up and say, yeah, we've, we've believed in Bitcoin for a long time, but you haven't. You're still not adding it because you don't understand and you still think that the US dollar has some type of longevity that it just does not. Anyway, that's the Uber news. Uh, floating around right now. So it's uh, the big bank and Uber. That's the, um, I guess, mega adoption news, if you will, for today. It says, Ether is insanely cheap. DeFi to rally. Bitcoin dominance to drop. This was said by Pantera Capital CIO. I, don't even, I, can, I can tell you exactly what the article says. I don't even have to read about it. Um, Ethereum is apparently extremely cheap to a lot of companies and organizations because of the amount of usage that Ethereum is actually getting. The amount of staking... The future uh, idea and prospectus of more staking, the amount of smart contracts that are actually on top of Ethereum, the amount of games, the amount of websites, and the amount of DeFi projects and platforms that are on top of it. And also the continued speculation of uh, future Ethereum 2.0 developments. He even says it somewhere around here about the price of it. Uh, I don't know. It's, yeah. um, it's not entirely crazy to see Ethereum being able to 5 to 10x from here. Absolutely not. Like, I am kind of shocked that we don't have more people talking about a $10,000 Ethereum at this point because it just seems like it's logically definitely going to get there. And as far as DeFi to rally, yeah, sure, why not? There's tons of um, companies who are announcing that they're also thinking about getting into the DeFi space because they think that the decentralization of actual finance. So basically, banks having less and less power, if you will, because everything can be done by a smart contract. Everything can be done decentralizationally. Um, 
is going to be a thing in the future. First of all, it is going to be a thing in the future, and it's more of a if, if you can get into there first, and therefore you are kind of the winner of the space. And Bitcoin's dominance to drop because remember, logically, we spoke about this before. If Bitcoin goes up by four percent, altcoins go up by fifteen percent, twenty percent, and that's just how the market always is. Whenever we are in some typer, typer, type of hyper bull run, so expect Bitcoin's dominance to drop, not its price, but math <laughs> mathematically. Mathematically, it's percentage dominance in the market next to altcoins because altcoins are probably going to continue to surge if Bitcoin continues to go higher. On top of that, I don't know if this sun is now like on the on the camera. If it is, I can't scream at the sun. I can't tell it to go away as much as I would like. Um, on top of that as well, guess who's in the news? The Grayscale Ethereum Trust has poured a whopping, whopping $100 million <clears throat> into buying Ether. And guess how many hours? 24. $100 million in 24 hours. <clears throat> the digital asset manager bought over 52,000 Ether, taking the total asset under management for Ether to 5.5 billion US dollars. And there's the tweet for it right there. Ethereum's getting a lot of attention. A l I th What's the word? I feel like this should have already happened for Ethereum, but I think a lot of people who are getting into the cryptocurrency space are looking for, they're betting on Bitcoin, but they're also looking for like a smidge of other alternatives. Um, and I think Ethereum, you know, has held its place as number two for a very long time. And therefore, this is why this is all happening. Um, I'm expecting wholeheartedly a $10,000 Ethereum sometime in the future. People were asking me to make another price prediction video. And I don't really, I, if you want it, I'll do it. Um, but it might get a little crazy. Um, anyway, yeah, so Grayscale keeps buying more. We have it, news that other institutions were also buying Ethereum, but not as heavily as Grayscale. And yeah, people are going to keep building on top of Ether. People are going to keep doing on so-and-so. And I keep seeing articles popping up uh, by people who I think uh, don't own any Ether and uh, bet on Tron and Mon and Tupadon and all these other coins that no one's not explicitly using and they keep talking about how Ethereum's fees are very high. Once again, no one cares. Like the actual people who are putting $100 million into these coins or who put $30 billion into Bitcoin, they don't care how slow these things are. These are digital assets and they can be held and they can be staked. And you can use Bitcoin as a secure way to send $100 million with a $38 fee, if need be, as opposed to a, a half a percent or 1% fee going through the bank. So you have to understand that uh, big money thinks very differently about money than little money. Not to sound mean, but that's kind of how it is. So yeah, Grayscale bought $100 million worth of Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. What more can be said? Wait, can't see the screen. Wait for it. Wait for it. What's this? What's that? What's this? Monobank co-founder invests in Bitcoin, predicting a $100,000 price target. Oleg Gorokovsky, the co-founder of Monobank, Ukraine's leading mobile bank, has disclosed a substantial personal investment in Bitcoin. What? That's crazy. He must be the first person to ever do something like that. That is quite wild. In a recent Facebook post, Gorokovsky said that while he is not specifically keen about financial forecasts, the news of Tesla investing billions of dollars into Bitcoin has conclusively convinced him that crypto is here to stay. I'm glad you've joined the boat. According to the entrepreneur, Bitcoin represents a substantial part of his per, per, wow, personal investment portfolio, and he recommends others to buy the digital asset. So um, no real news on how much Bitcoin this guy owns. You should know this by now just from being an adult. Um, don't tell anyone how much Bitcoin you own. It's kind of the same exact way. Like imagine meeting somebody, sitting down next to them and be like, dude, I got $30,000 in my bank account. It's, it's weird, right? You would never tell somebody how much you have in your bank account. Why tell them how much Bitcoin you have? Um, not even for security reasons. Like, it's just none of their business. Like, you don't walk up and say, hey, I have a, a size 10 shoe. Yeah? Want, want to swap? Like, it just, it's just not a thing. So he didn't tell anybody, but he says he has a substantial amount. He's predicting $100,000 Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin's going to 100000 Just a matter of when. I'm predicting summer, what have you. Uh, this also in the news as well. Another rich person buying Bitcoin. What's this one? 
Oh, Hester Pierce is also in the news, and everyone is also um, kind of giddy over this as well. U.S. capital markets are ready for a Bitcoin exchange-traded product. This was said by U.S. Securities and Exchange Commissioner Hester Pierce on Thursday. The regulator said people are already eager to make a Bitcoin ETP. And so if we don't give them the natural way, which I think would be an ETP, they are going to look for other less optimal ways to do it. For those of you who have no idea what she's talking about for the last four, five years, a lot of people have been trying to make a Bitcoin exchange traded note or an ETF, ETF, exchange traded fund. Basically a fund where they can hold Bitcoin and speculate on Bitcoin and Bitcoin on Bitcoin and yada, yada, yada. And the US SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, has shot down every single proposal over and over and over. The Winklevoss twins, I think, gave six proposals. They were all shut down. And the SEC refused to say exactly what was needed in the paperwork to be able to have one of these things go through. Now, remember what I mentioned before, and I keep saying this over and over because it's just how the world works. If you can't do something in your country, what do you do? Especially if you have money, what do you do? You pack your bags, you pack your computer, and you go to another country. There are tons of other countries right now who have already listed exchange-traded notes and exchange-traded products that are based on Bitcoin. So if you want to trade these things, you go find a way to go trade it. If you can't do business in your own country, well, listen, you get on a plane, you get residency somewhere else, and then you do, you do business in that country and you give them your money. This is the less optimal way that she was talking about because people have already figured out, we want to trade in Bitcoin. We want to buy these funds that are based on Bitcoin. How do we do so? Well, they have it. Well, let's go over there. Hester Pierce has been the only person within the SEC who's really been like, just do it. Just give it to them. But the former head, uh, was it John Clayton? Jay Clayton. Doesn't really matter. He's gone now. The same exact guy who uh, launched the lawsuit against Ripple on his last day in office because he had nothing better to do with his time. Uh, basically, at this point, um, no one cares. And I, and, and I say that honestly because the idea was in 2018, Bitcoin would skyrocket to $35,000 once. We had a Bitcoin ETF. There was no other way. We needed rich people in the market and we needed an ETF. And since there's been no ETF and Bitcoin is really close to $50,000, it lets us know, hey, we don't really need it. When we do get an ETF and all the mega companies really start rolling into it, Bitcoin's price will continue to skyrocket from here. But it's just a matter of we don't really need it. Like the, the current amount of demand in the space is already going to propel us to $200,000. That's just logical mathematics. Um, but anything besides that or anything extra on top of that is only going to help us as a market. So um, it's been speculated that the new head of the SEC is actually quite crypto friendly. And therefore, we may potentially get a Bitcoin ETF sometime this year. Once again, we don't need it. But if we get it, that'll add some extra zeros to the end of Bitcoin's price. So um, she's been in the news a lot lately. I haven't really covered her because it's like, why? I'm not covering every single thing that Hester Pierce is saying about a, a, a Bitcoin ETF or a Bitcoin anything. Uh, but alas, a lot of people think that this is pretty much a go for this year. And if we get that, expect an ETF for Ethereum. A potential ETF that is going to be covering like the major altcoins. So it'll be a Cardano, XRP, Litecoin, Badoo coin inside of it. So, and that'll also help propel the prices a lot higher as well. So the future is very bright for crypto. Um, if you haven't noticed already, um, very weird, very wild time to be in the market. Yeah. Uh, what's this one? Oh, yes. And to finish things off, um, keeping in mind, everything in this video, there's like three times as much extra news that I could not fit in here. Think about that. There's so much news today. It's really insane. So on top of that as well, for those of you who don't know, just to quickly finish things off, because you should you should be adequately hyped already. Like your, 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 your hype cup should be completely full. Um, Amazon to launch cryptocurrency payment products in emerging countries. Is anyone surprised? No, not really. Um, the rumors are uh, that at the moment, they may just allegedly be looking into creating their own currency, their own coin. This was speculation from a while ago that they're trying to do something. I think they're starting in Mexico first, that they're planning on doing something and hiring someone to help them create a digital e-commerce kind of thing for themselves. If Amazon creates their own coin, 
no one's going to use it. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because it's going to be a stable coin. We have tons of stable coins. No one really cares. Um, and they cannot create anything that is going to be as big as Bitcoin or that's going to pass by Bitcoin. So their only real option in the end is to simply just announce what everyone is expecting them to do, that they are going to start accepting cryptocurrencies as a payment method on their platform. I'm not sure why companies keep playing games, why they think it's cool to be like, yeah, I don't I don't have any Bitcoin because I'm I'm so cool and I like not making money. I'm not like we know that you're all going to accept Bitcoin. What's the what's the what's the it's not even a cat and mouse game, it's like a I don't even know, kind of game at this point. Um, so yes, the news also is, it's not speculation. Amazon's definitely doing this, but it's a matter of which coins are they going to add? Are they making their own coin? Are they adding stable coins? Or will they just finally do what everything else? Maybe it's like a, um, it's not a David and Goliath kind of thing, but maybe something similar. It's kind of like a, maybe they don't want to have to admit that they themselves can't create something that's better than Bitcoin or that's going to be more widely used or adopted. Like we know that everyone's buying Bitcoin. I'm going to speculate an assumption that all the major players in the space, you know, the Fortune 500s and the the, the, the rich and the riches and that they're all buying Bitcoin. You know that you're buying Bitcoin because you understand the long-term prospects of where its price is going to go. Is it that you're not adding Bitcoin right now because you yourself are trying to accumulate more and you don't want like a, a, a Tesla style pump in the market? Not really sure what it is, but they're all going to have Bitcoin as a payment option. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I don't have it in me to read the Patreon names. I do completely apologize. Like, I can feel my... I'm, I'm about a 2 out of 10 right now. I'm running on fumes. I haven't had breakfast, and I'm like... Um, the room is also incredibly hot, which I think isn't really helping. The sun, for some reason... Uh, thank goodness that we have sun in, in, in the winter. That's nice. Um, but it's like beaming right into the room, and my body can't take it anymore. Bitcoin's at $47,400, up by 2%. XRP's at $0.59. Cents. It's up by 15%. Um, no real news. That's what I was saying before. Uh, just speculating as to why it's going up. Polkadot's up by 2%. Cosmos is up by 30%. Can't give you a reason why. Uniswap is up by 10 Nem is up by... Three Tron's up by sixteen percent. I think there's there was some like Lindsay Lohan Tron hype or something like that. <laughs> um, the graph is up by fifty six percent. Maker's up by two percent. Yay, the sun's going away. V chain Thor's up by twenty percent. Compounds up by seven. Algo is up by twenty percent as well. Yearn Phi is up by 25%. Wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. And Zcash is up by 11 and Dash is up by 11 as well. I do hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to have breakfast and then take a nice little nap so that I can have more than four hours of sleep. I do hope you all enjoyed. Um, you should have. Do you, do you see the... Like, the, the adoption news every single day is just wonderful. You should be hyped after every single video... Just knowing, especially knowing, that you made the right choice investing in the correct market. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.